Sir, Fly Guy Buddy on the check-in. Lindy Official, what's up? Shout out to 50 Cent. Shout out to Uncle Murder. Shout out to Blanco Sencha. Had a beautiful star, right? Who was with a star? Spin King. Had a beautiful dinner with those guys. First time out. I didn't know how to act. Our boogie was good. It's so fancy. <laughs> you love this shit, fancy. You love this shit, fancy. You love this shit, man. Fancy Nancy on the check in. Toronto on the check in. We are by far the big, 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 biggest in the game. And we unstoppable. And every day at 8 p.m., we give it to you. And we talk that shit. Today I came out. I had the mask on. But I actually touched the streets. And everybody I passed was like, yo, I watch your show every day. Yo, my father watch your show. Everybody watch. We ain't playing with these dudes. Come from a real place. This that Papi Budo right here. We the biggest in the game, fancy. You know that shit? It's a 10 CEO. Yo, Callan. Callan, I might pull up on you tomorrow because I'm really... Really, really, Carolyn Aronson, it's a ten. We really need that stick. We really need that stick. You know what I'm talking about. I'm telling you, my sister, life or death, we need that. No question. Shout out to Brazil, the favelas. The favelas is in the building. Yo, Eric B., what's good, bro? Last Detroit, what's up, my brother? Saving lives out there. Know what I'm saying? Yeah, sis, we... Blue, it's a 10 blue. The stick, I'm gonna bring you one, but the stick gotta be like blue. It's a 10 blue. Let me get the book. This is my sister, Bevelicious. When my daughter was born, she was at the hospital. She is family to the death. And Bevy Smith is coming on tonight to talk about her book. And we're gonna have, we're gonna shoot the shit with all the other people. You know how that go. Fat Joe Fan, UK, one of the most loyal guys ever created. Thank you. Thanks. To what was that? The D.A. Yeah, that's what it was. You sure? Yeah, that's what it was. Okay, because you know. You know how that goes. Shout out to Toronto. The Used to be the T dot, now it's the 666666. It's the yeah. D.A. I saw a documentary based on French Montana's life that I want to place bets. I want to place bets on if you're going to cry or get some tears. The man, the man, I don't want to tell you everything about it, but the man, he's Muslim. It shows how he grew up with his family. Morocco, him going back to Africa, just so much. It was so amazingly done. I hadn't realized that I was in the documentary. And it was like really, 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 really. It was an honor for me to be a part of his life being told. Um, and amazing. Like this, this shit is going to win something. This documentary is going to win an award. I don't know if it's the film festival I don't know where that shit gonna be. Shout out to Tiffany Lighty. I on the check-in, Chris Lighty's daughter. I'll call you after the show. Luis Miguel, te quiero mi hermano, Colombia. Te quiero. Tiffany Lighty, Chris Lighty's daughter, says she loves seeing this. I posted a picture with 50. And of course, you know, Chris Lighty discovered 50. He discovered Fat Joe, and that's the reason why we brought peace and we've been peace ever since. Um, the man's kept his word, uh, and I kept my word. And we and we, we 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 break bread like family. We eat, so love, you know. And so, it is what it is. So so French Montana's documentary, incredible, off the chain. Whenever it comes out, it is a must see. I love you too. And uh, so we come on here every day. You know, we just had lobsters, shrimps, uh, fish. They, they, I, they brought a fish out so big 
that it looked like they they killed the uh the Miami Dolphin, the logo. This shit was so big. I D nice, you got D nice tonight, pretty Lou? Pretty Lou got right after this. Pretty Lou got the DJ show on Instagram. He is on fuego, on fire. They talked about the man on ESPN this week. They talked about the man all over TV. Cool Grims, what's up, my brother? Cool Mims, what's up? Red Alert, is my girl ready? I have her ready for you right now. T Lover, let's get on Bevy ready. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get to it. Lessons from a mother, auntie, and bestie. What time do I tell Ted? This woman is something else, Bevy. Huh? Okay. What time do I tell Ted? To stay close by. And so, uh, and so, last night was an amaz amazing day. We had your man Vegas Dave on here. We had, uh, Tribute, your Rob Cash, what's up? We had a tribute to LL Cool J and Slick Rick, which was amazing. Jay Majors, what's up? Rob Cash, good dude. Rob Cash, a great dude. Shout out to Harlem on the check it. And um, Hola Chili. And we come on here every day, we talk our shit. And I like to bring people in here who made it from nothing and filthy rich and just tell us all the obstacles they went to to get where they at. And so, uh, we for the people, completely. Uh, technically, this is informative hip hop. Mrs. Khaled Khaled, on the looking fly today. That's the second day you had a fly sweatsuit on that I gave you compliments on. Yeah, you blowing the bag, Nicole. Nicole, you. <laughs> Nicole, you blowing the bag out here, man. Cause y'all, my sis, she don't care, but she been coming too fly. She's blowing the bag. She's blowing the bag. And so, uh, and so that's what I am, a vessel to talk to the people. Um, and boy, we're going to have a great time tonight like we do every night. And so I'm over there eating steaks and lobsters. And I get up like 20 minutes ago and I said, listen, gentlemen, I got to go. Like, yo, crack, the food just started coming out. I said, listen, man, I got to get to my people. I got to do the big, 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 big show. And they all start laughing because they know I'm on here. The whole COVID, been here. I've been by your side. The whole time. And so I was talking to 50 Cent over dinner. Shout out E Philly. And I told him about recently, you know, someone had offended me, like a journalist or some shit like that. And the man said, Joe, this is one of the illest quotes. I wrote this shit down. He said, Joe, there's no sympathy for winners. There's no sympathy. And I was like, yo, you know what? Yo, baby. Yo, baby, you looking beautiful tonight, man. What's going on, baby? I love you, Joe, and thank you for having me on the big, 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 biggest show ever. Listen, we don't want to tell them your nickname with all my nephews. Big Titty Bab. Yo, baby, stop. <laughs> yo, baby, you got to stop. Yo, Bab, I love you so much, sis. But I, I can, every time I see you, there's some key people that the minute I see you, I remember my daughter was born and you were the, one of the first people there. And then my little nephews was there and they were all going like this. And I was like, what the fuck they looking at? And then I look at Bev, because I'm pretty much, I'm spoiled. I've been used to them bevy, bevelicious things. So I don't even pay attention, but they like, and I'm like, Yo, what the fuck y'all look? <laughs> so Bev, we bought three copies already. Thank you, baby. Nah, we on deck. Tell me why this book. Tell me why. Tell me about your journey. I know, but we got to let the people know. Yeah. 
Well, the journey is this, Joe. You know, we we are folks that come from New York, New York. So nice they had to name it twice. You know, mm -hmm. you from the BX. I'm from Harlem. You know, so it's uptown for life. And where we come from, a lot of times they place limitations on what we can do, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I was no exception. I come from a good family like you come from a good family. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times when we're outside, we get so caught up with the streets that we kind of leave behind the 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 best of who we are, Joe. Mm. And now I'm seeing you as a mature man and the way you handle yourself and the way you handle your family, most importantly, lets me know that Joe has gotten back to the core of who he is. And mm. I managed to get back to the core of who I am, which is Lulu Brown Bevy. But it, before I got back to Lulu Brown Bevy, you know, I was Big Bev from Uptown, wreaking mm. havoc in these motherfucking Uptown streets. You know, I'm from the era of paid in full. I'm from the era of, you know, the tunnel, the red zone. I'm friends with Big, Puff, you know, um, you know, Pop. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a hot girl in that era. And during that era, I had the most fun, but I definitely didn't show up as my most authentic self. And so now today, mm -hmm. I've managed to put together Big Bed from Uptown, merge her with Little Brown Bevy and sprinkle in Bevy Smith, fashionista, and now that's who you're looking at today. You that's know, Bev, it's a, it's a fact. It's uh, I think we've grown to the point, I don't know if everybody did this before us and other generations, but I, I, I think I did enough fucking around. Right. And, and it's like, even now, I'm dropping a single next week. I'm sure Terrell tell you what it is, but I... I ain't telling nobody yet. For the big, big show, I got a soundtrack. Ain't that some shit? I love I'm it. hustling the soundtrack for the big, big show. Yes. And, um, and, but it's grown, it's, 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 it's fly grown shit. And I have no fear with, with doing some grown fly shit. Exactly. I don't, I'm not scared. And for so many years, I was scared. I was like, yo, you got to keep it young. You got to be like, mm -hmm. I'm not really scared about being my true self, like you said. Yeah, but everyone needs to get to that point. And that's what the book is about. Because especially for those of us who come from humble beginnings, we all have to pull on this tough exterior. Mm. Like, Joe, I'm sure who you were before the streets got to you was a really, really super sweet, sensitive guy. Because that's how you are with Azzy, and that's how you are with Lorena, which means that was always fucking in you. But the streets made you have to go like an animal. It's in my book. I got a book coming out yeah. um, in a couple of months. And in my book, you 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 see that point. And it's yeah. similar to like when you uh, watch Paid in Full, because I'm thinking you, I think Harlem, when Rich was in the car and he was just crying. He said, anybody ever did something to me? Ever did something? Because yeah. his, his nephew had got kidnapped. Yeah. But there was a moment in my life where I just blacked out. And, and before that, I had good grades. I was the nicest kid. I was yeah. a sweet kid. And the streets could do that. You know what I mean? And I yeah. asked God for, for forgiveness every night and try to explain, like, you know, it was my surroundings, God. Like, I was the way I was because I had no choice. Yes. Right? Yes. And so... You felt like you had no choice. You felt like we feel like we have no choice. Like, for me, I was bullied, so I was like, I don't want to be bullied. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I got to learn how to have some swagger. You know what I mean? Like, and, and you know, Joe, I used to play hooky from high school and go to the library. <laughs> like, wow. Like, yeah. You thought you was doing something. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, but that, but I wouldn't tell people I was going to the library. I'd be like, no, I'm not even going to that class. I'm out of here, whatever. And then I would go to the fucking library and read some fucking books, Okay. But I couldn't let no one know that. And I'll never forget the first time that Little Brown Bevy and, and, and Big Beth from Uptown met each other. It was when I started working at Vibe Magazine. And I was a fashion advertising director. And Dame Dash was in the offices doing some kind of business. And when he came into the conference room I was in, he's like, what the fuck you doing here, Big Bev? And I was like, oh, I'm the fashion advertising director. He's like, how the fuck you get that job? I was like, oh. The entire time I was outside, I was going to school and I had a career. But I hid that. Like, Joe, literally, like, I hid 
the fact that I was a smart girl and that I was a driven girl and, 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 and that I had all these dreams and aspirations, I hit it. Because yeah. even as a 20-something-year-old woman, even in your late 20s, the streets don't want to hear that shit. Yeah, they don't want to hear that shit. You know, I was on a call today. I was on a Zoom with my girl, Erica Ford. You know her. She's a community yeah. activist. I met her through Tupac, right? Wow. And yeah. she's been in the streets forever out of Queens and New York. And there's something coming up called Peace Week and trying to get the kids to put down the guns. And I think, I think, and I'm not a genius or nothing, but I think with the street life, with business and entrepreneurs, we got to teach the youth earlier, right? So, so earlier, so like me, you know, I've been getting money forever, but I've been playing all type of games. Right. Now that I turned 50 years old, I got real serious about my money. Right. I'm real serious about my business. And then, but I've been doing good the whole time, but now I'm like sharp, right? right? But I think everyone should do that 35 to 40 years old. 35 years old, you should be serious and sharp and everything. So that when you hit 45 years old, you got the bag. Yeah. And you can enjoy yourself. Then you can enjoy and, yourself. And the crazy thing about life, and I know kids that's watching, they heard this a million times, but the shit just be moving. Yeah. And it so yesterday, quick. yesterday I took my mother and father to get the vaccine. They got in the list. They got the vaccine. Yeah. But I went and got them at six in the morning. Mm -hmm. I got to hold my mother's hand, walking in the shit. And then the, the tables turned. Yeah. And now it's me holding my mother's hand and signing the paperwork, yeah. making sure she get the vaccine. And But what's crazy about that is that I look at them, they ain't but 20 years older than where I'm at now. Right. Yeah. And so the sense of urgency, the smell in the air, like I'm driving the car, smelling the air, I'm bumping my key sweat, don't stop the love. Right. And and I'm just enjoying every moment of the day, everything that we can enjoy, you know? And um, because life really, really goes by really, 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 really quick. And, and when you turn around, you're like, oh shit. Yeah, and it comes at you fast. And in my book, Revelations Lessons from My Mother, Auntie Bestie, let's plug it. Uh, in my book, I actually talk about how, like I changed my life at 38. Like I, I was successful. I was the only black person in management at Rolling Stone magazine. It was a, it was just a whole, you know, executive level of like just white folks. And the only black people really at, at Rolling Stone were the writer Torre, who was on the edit side, but I was where the money reside. And then, um, and then there was security guards and there was mailroom people. And mm. I was making great money in 2005. I was making mid six figures and I quit to pursue a career in TV. And Joe, I fucking did it. And I did it as a grown ass woman. And I did it with all of my Harlem swagger. And so the book is about how everybody should be never giving up on their dreams. I, my, I got a whole saying called, it gets greater later. And you are a living testament to that shit. Because Joe, one of the things I love most about you is that you're a fucking chameleon. And you keep going. And that's the reason why you're never really ever gonna lose. You're always going to win because you know how to evolve. But yeah. everybody got to know how to pivot. And right now, because of the pandemic, people are having to pivot because they're being forced to pivot. And I'm going to tell you, if you out there listening to us, watching us, if you if you out of work or something like that, please go in and, and try to find a skill set and a passion of yours that you can turn into a business. Mm -hmm. When you go back, when you get another job, because I'm not telling everybody got to be an entrepreneur, but what I'm saying is everybody need multiple revenue streams. I make money from being on TV, on radio, as a public speaker. You know what I'm saying? And now it's yeah, more. every little every more. little count. It's a pizza pie. Yes. You know, uh, not too long ago, I was we so positive, baby. I won't go there, but um, it's a pizza pie. And at the end of the day, whatever goes in your bank account, goes in your bank account. Shout out to D-Nice yes, in the building. And another, we got to get... Another one who pivoted and another one who comes from our community. 
and and continues to grow and evolve. Yeah, an American hero, D Nice. Yeah, he's different. Yeah. You know, he, he he's different in what he did for the people. Yes. Uh, out of love, DJ, and during the COVID, and everybody coming together, and feeling like we're somewhere because we're trapped in the house, we can't leave, and um. And boy, what D Nice was able to do for the people. And you know, this this COVID is a this pandemic is like we haven't seen this in a hundred years, man. Yeah. Crazy. You know, if you think all the people we know that died before this, they never get to see this shit. Yeah. Where everybody wearing the mask, people got a vaccine, people got a this, everybody got to stay away. I mean, it's a real, real challenging time. Mm -hmm. And so I respect D Nice and and the verses. Yeah. For doing it. And then, you know, the Fat Joe show. And then, you know, everybody who's doing their thing, trying to keep the people in good spirits. Yeah. Because it's a hard time. It is a hard time. And people and need to... And, and one second back, it's normal for somebody to be going through some type of stress yeah. or mental issues because this ain't normal shit, Bev. And, and sometimes, no matter how tough you are, you can break momentarily. Yeah. So if you need help, you should get some sort of help because it's fucking real out here. It's, yeah. it's really real. It is. And that's a part of us going back to who we are at our core, though, right? Like putting down the tough guy, or the tough girl persona and being like, you know what? I need some help. You know what I mean? Like I need to go talk. To I need a shoulder I can lean on. I need to go cry somewhere. You know what I mean? Like there's so much strength in being vulnerable. You know, and I think oftentimes when you come from communities like ours, you always think of the, the biggest, toughest person as the strongest one. But it's really those people that know how to humble themselves and admit mm -hmm. when they hurt and admit when they, they, they need some help. Those are the strongest people. And um, so, you know, for me and my book, I'm trying to give folks some help, but I'm also admitting when I've been vulnerable. I admit when, you know, I went all the way left and really... That's my truest self. You know what I mean? And and what do you mean by that, Bev? When you say you left your truest self, like let's well, well, let's like, be honest about this. Let let us open up. Yeah. What are some of the things you did that you really wouldn't have did if you was truly yourself? Oh wow! Well, <laughs> a bunch of shit. Um, but like you know, like Joe, for real. Like I was so miserable. Like in my um my like late twenties, early like my early thirties. Mm -hmm. Like in um, the salon song, I try to sleep it away, shop it away, fuck it away. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and uh, and I remember like when I stopped going on dates and drinking heavily, that cut down on a lot of my body count. <laughs> oh yeah, because you know the liquor part of the trick. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even a guy, a guy like me that know that don't like to drink like that. You know, you got to get the liquor involved to score the home run. Right, right, exactly. So you might have to take a drink or two and fuck yourself up in the meantime. Right, exactly. So, so my number, my count, my body count went way down. You know what I'm saying? Um, and 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 you know, and while I don't have any regrets about that, in the book I call it, I refer to it fucks and fumbles. You know, I'm so glad. When fucks I and fumbles. Yeah, fucks and fumbles. What you mean by that? That's dope. <laughs> right. It's just like, you know, a lot of them fucks was fumbles. Like, they shouldn't have never happened. You know what I mean? Like, you look at the people and you're like, really, though? That's who you, you chose? Like, mm. you know what I mean? And But again, because I was a miserable, I was trying to find different ways to make myself happy. I was also a shopaholic. You know, I worked in fashion. And, that's, and, that, and, that, and, that, and that, that's a crime in itself. Yeah. Like, I've, I've been a shopaholic. I still am a shopaholic, but the COVID made me slow down and be focused because we can't go nowhere. So why am I going to be buying all this fly shit right. every day if I can't even go nowhere, right? Yeah. So that right. helped me. But I do have a problem with being a shopaholic. And people don't understand what that is. It means if you like to be fly, you like fly shit, you want to buy it. And everybody, I would, I would say Floyd Mayweather's a shopaholic. Oh, he's a shopaholic. He, he, he's like a fucking predicate felon of shopping. He got to buy some shit yeah. all the time. Yes, yes. And, and and listen, I'm not going to knock nobody's thing. But what I am going to say, for me, it was like self-medicating. Because I literally, and, and Terrell would be with me, because so I worked in fashion, so I had discounts at every store. You know, so I would hit 
I would hit Fifth Avenue, Fendi, Dior, Gucci. I go on the free shit out of Vuitton, which is very hard to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, it, and, and it was yeah, you can't get free shit out of none of that shit. Yeah, or a discount. Yeah, exactly. I got discounts everywhere, but it was sexy, right? Because you go into the store, they know you're a VIP customer, and you're not even a VIP customer because you spend money. You're a VIP customer because you're a fashion executive. So they treat you. Mm. You get the private dressing room. You get the champagne as soon as you come in the door. It was sexy, right? So if you're a miserable person when you get that when you're going in there and then they taking things out. This really truly limited edition. It's sexy. And you start feeling that high. You get that high. You get that high. And then guess what happened? When you buy the shit and you get home and after you take the bag and you like from from and you and it's nothing. It's really nothing. That happened to me all my life. Like if I wanted a car and yeah. I finally got the car and then you get bored of the car. Yeah. And then you and then you try to do shit to just make you want to go get something. You know, that's the story. Like, yo, Terrell, have you ever been satisfied with Terrell? You ever been you ever been satisfied with buying fashion? Because you go shopping every day. Have you ever been like, oh, I'm good now? No. You can't fill that cup. She's the flyest guy we know. The flyest. Like, I mean, nobody can fuck with Terrell. Like uh -huh. that. That. That's it. You know, Terrell. You know what I told Terrell? We shooting the video on Monday, COVID free. Everybody taking the test, taking the thing, and uh, and uh, and so Terrell. Uh, I tell him, though, Terrell, I need that shit. So you know, we've been doing this for so many years. He said, but what you talking about? I said, well, I need the outfit that Terrell would wear if he was showing up to another stylist's birthday party. <laughs> and you know how Terrell be coming in there yeah. humble with the fly shit on, like he really don't know he got the fly right. shit on. I'm like, yo, that's what I want. I want that shit right there. And he's going to get it for you. Oh, no, he's going to get it. Yeah, he's going to get it. I mean, Terrell is the man. Um... Bev, let me ask you something, because when we when we when when I talk to you or anytime, it screams hollow. Give me like five of the dopest moments you experience in Harlem. Wow, there's so many dope moments. The rooftop. Um when the rooftop was the, the we'll take the rooftop as one. Rooftop. And for those who don't know the rooftop, that wasn't paid in full. That was in Harlem. That was the fly spot. All the hustlers. All the rappers. That was the first time I ever seen Heavy D. I was at the rooftop, and Heavy D was out there. He was my idol. You know, he's still my idol. Rest yeah. in peace. But I actually seen Heavy. And I was like, oh, shit, Heavy out here. Mm -hmm. and you know, LL. Yeah. Everybody used to come uptown to the rooftop. Come uptown to the rooftop. And it was a roller skating ring. It was. And it made people just crazy. And, and I lived five blocks from the rooftop. Mm. In my backyard, Joe. So that was like one of my highlights. Then, of course, you're home away from home, Rucker. Again, five blocks away from where I grew up. So you used to play the Rucker in the in, in the glory day of the Rucker. You was out there. Oh my God! Yes. As a matter of fact, one of my one of my guys was a kingpin, and he used to stop the game when I came on the court because he would like stop the game down, so I could walk across the court and take my seat. And this is before Rucker went corporate. So he, he he would stop the whole game like Bevy here. Yeah, because I would come through in my like Versace or whatever. Because you know I worked in fashion, so I would have all my outfits and everything. You know I had all that Audi, and I would just come through and and they'd be like, you know, they would call me his name, Miss Blah Blah Blah. You know what I mean? And it was a, it was a good life. It was a it, it was a little movie going on. It was there. a little movie. So you got the rooftop and and the rocket that's across the street from each yeah. other. You right, right there, right there. That's heavy polo grounds. Yeah, exactly. Fifty fifth. Yeah. What would be another moment? Um, we got to talk about the Willie Burger stand. Oh, yeah. Willie Burgers, that was it. For me, coming from the Bronx, I come over 149th, go over the bridge, come down in my car, blasting my system yep. uh, in the truck, go up to the top of Sugar Hill, come back, make the U-turn, 
and me, I, I, you know, I've always been like adventurous or, or daring. You know, I love getting out the car, fat Puerto Rican nigga with 10 right. chains on, no shirt on in the summer, right. keep doors open and just order me some Willie Burgers and just right. daring, just, 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 I wanted people to look at me like, yo, this guy crazy over here. Like he's, he's nuts. And, and Willie Burger and the burgers. <laughs> It was it was a full. Yeah, we always mention Willie Burger like a landmark, but the actual burgers the actual burger. was incredible. Incredible. Well, that's the, but then Jimbo took over. Yeah, yeah, Jimbo all over. Yeah, Jimbo took Jimbo over. Jimbo like the Burger Mafia in the hood. Right. Exactly, exactly. So it was it was it was Willie Burger, and then of course the Apollo on Wednesdays. Ooh. Traffic stopped. From 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 river to river, it was bonkers. It was the best of times. It was the listen, Bev. I was there. I was there, and <laughs> I was there as a hustler, getting money, going there every week. I used to throw money at people performing. That's right on stage, and it and it was always no disrespect. I don't know where they got them from, but it was always a fat chick. That would come on exactly. after we would have one and we go, and I am telling you. And we'd be like, ah! I mean, we went for the same trick every week in the Apollo. I'm not going. And yes. she kicked her shoes off and we, everybody throwing it every week. Yeah, every week. We so fell for the same, <laughs> the same thing. Yo, that was like, oh my God. That was it. We come outside, Big Daddy Kane be out there with the wide body kit, Ben's the cherry red shit, iced out, Mike Tyson be in the hallway. Mike Tyson. I am Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson during that era spent so, he endowed so many people in the community. It was crazy. When people don't understand, that was such a golden era. He wasted so much money. It's no wonder he went broke. But thank God he made it back now. Mm, he's doing great. Boy. Yeah, but Mike Tyson was out there spending that money. He was in there fighting Mitch Green. Yeah. He was over there with Dapper Dan. He was yeah. in, he lived in Daps. Yeah. And I remember the first time I seen Mike Tyson, he was in the first floor lobby of, of the Apollo. First time ever. Mm -hmm. All I saw was the back of his neck. Okay. And his neck was so big that I was like, oh, shit. I am Mike. And I remember walking by him. I got a little rope chain on with the anchor. And I'm trying to make him see me like, you know. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you got four there. What's the, what's the next one? Oh, the next one. I got uh, someone mentioned it in the um, comments. I would say Grant's Tomb. Oof. Tomb was was the best. Oh God, Grant's tomb. Call him in the summertime, any old way. And you know, uh, you no, know, I think of Grand Tomb. I think of great, 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 great times. But I also think of where uh, Rest in Peace Wolf. Oh yeah. And Anthony, they got they, they their funeral was over there in Grand Tomb. Yeah. Remember, Puff rented the whole Grant's tomb, and it, yeah. it was the the best service I ever been to. Yeah. Um. You know, over there in Grant's Tomb, but Grant's Tomb, and it's crazy, right? Because when you drive through these areas now, and we got the memories, it's almost like it never happened, right? And it's almost like it never happened. It's like, yo, these kids didn't know it was popping in Grant's they, Tomb. My friend Mark just said, "What about Bentley's? Bentley's was the place that you went when you wanted to get grown and sexy on. That's when the, your hustler guy had to pull on his slacks." Wow, and the the the, the, the one of the greatest moments. Um, and I ain't get to go there, but I seen Terrell in pictures. Uh, I think it was Fashion Week, and they this they took out all the seats in the Apollo, mm -hmm. and then they made like a tent in the schoolyard in the back. Yeah. yeah. What event was that, baby? You was there, that, right? Actually, the Apollo Gala. They do a gala every year, and they do that, and it's bonkers. So that explain it to to the people because. So, so like, um, wow, we've seen everyone from the Ozzy Brothers perform there. We've seen, you know, um, Prince perform there at the gala. Like, it, it just all the biggest, biggest, biggest stars have come through the Apollo Gala. And what they do is they sell tickets. They'll be like, 
ten thousand dollars for you know a ticket because it's for a gala. It's a fundraiser, and then afterwards it's a it's a beautiful after party with and you it's no VIP. So you like standing right next to somebody. right next to somebody. You yeah. you know? you right next to baby face. Yeah, right. You know it's not like no VIP shit because if you in there, first of all, it's ten thousand dollars ticket, so it's probably not going to be any riff wrap up in there. So then there ain't no bums in there. Yeah. Yeah. And I was so jealous one year I seen Terrell in there and I was just like, what the fuck? Because you know, I started in the Apollo amateur night at the Apollo. Right, I know. I came four weeks in a row, first yeah. place. So I know the Apollo well. Yeah. And it's my home. Yeah. And uh and so when he showed me that, I was like, get the fuck out of here. They did that shit in the Apollo. Like he was like, yo, it was flying. Russell Simmons was over here. And this one was, I was like, yo, T Love, are you serious? Yeah, that's a good um, thing. When the world opened back up, we'll go. Oh, I gotta go. Like now, now it's it's no question. Um, and so the book. Yeah. Can we tell the people how to get their hands on this book? Okay, you can go and find Bevelations, Lessons from a Mother, Auntie Bestie, anywhere where books are sold, or you can go to my website bevysmith.com and we have you know but it's ev everywhere it's amazon it's barnes and nobles it's your your local bookstore it's everything you know bev uh i remember your birthday when you was in vegas so i had a show in vegas yes oh yeah and um and they turned around and they said bev's in town it's her birthday and you and amy shout out to amy morris she yeah. used to work with me and all your friends was out there and I said, tell Bev I got her. So you come, you got all the champagne. Like you're supposed to. You know, we live a life, man. Yeah. We never, we never short of nothing. We, yeah. we yeah. always live life like it's the last day. Exactly. We don't ball, right? Exactly. So we over there, and I remember I'm talking to you, and you got the you got the TV show. And my man, who's my friend, who's in Hollywood, mm -hmm. he's hitting me up like Joe, get me in. And I'm like, no problem. He's a good friend of mine. And when he comes, you stand up and you're like, yo, Joe, this is my boss. <laughs> yeah. This is the guy. You remember that shit, man? And I was like, Chris, that's my guy. And you was like, yo, Joe, this is my boss. Yeah. And it was so crazy that he was hitting me to get in, but you was there with us. And it's just the, it's, it's the way the world's so small. Yes. But it's also, too, a testament to our resilience and the way we keep moving, Joe. Because we're always in rooms that they don't expect us to be in. You know, we've traveled the world. You know, you've done Milan Fashion Week. You know, I've done Milan Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, London Fashion Week. And we're from where we're from. And that's just a testament to how we're built. And I want people to understand that, like, there's no limit to this. And you don't have to front about it. You can look up, oh, yep, Hall and Candle Company. I just said, you know, you need to put your Harlem candle. Hi, girl. <laughs> hey, yeah, you see Nicole, you, Mrs. New Harlem, look at Nicole. Yeah, yo, man, man, you got too much love, man. That's my Harlem. I love that. Harlem candle. Yes. What is this candle about? That's a Harlem candle company. That's made in Harlem. It's by a black girl who makes candles, and that's called the Langston after the great Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes? Yeah. Woo! It's, oh, it's really good. Man, yeah. uh, I was gonna tell you, T. Lover, you wanna say hi to? Uh, she knows. You not doing that? <laughs> she knows I love it. How's your mother doing? My mom is doing great. She's doing great. She, no, it's her mother's she birthday. birthday. She's 90, had a birthday. Ninety three. Ninety three. Yeah. You know, I see your mom. She just be like, yeah. And she's and thank God, she's so focused. Yeah. Full of life. Full of life. Yeah. She uh, she she she's sharp. Yeah, she's sharp. She loved meeting you too. <laughs> loved meeting you. I was Man, like, the, the last thing I will ask you, right? Because you're so strong in the LGBT community. Yes. They love you. Yeah. I love you, them. You love them. What was the embracement? I know we all family, we all, but you got a special bond. Yeah. Like you, you, you know, you, you know, they love you. Like you're the okay. you're the mothership. Yes. What is it? What 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 is it with you and the LGBT community? What makes that so special? That bond. Well, here you go. So here's the thing. Did you know?
that the original gay balls that you see on Pose and on Legendary and all that, all these TV shows that you're seeing now, and Madonna's Vogue and all of that, that all came out of Harlem. The original gay balls came out of Harlem. So Harlem was always very, very gay friendly. So when I grew up, I literally didn't even know it was some people that felt that being gay was a problem or was a stigma. Because in my community, gay people just, as long as you can hold your own, oftentimes, you know, like, oh, remember on Fame, um, Tony Ray? Leroy? Did you know this, Joe? Did you know that his mother was a drug queen pen? Her name was Jean, too. And she was a drug queen pen. As a matter of fact, she was one of the, um, she worked with Guy Fisher. And mm. I just had Guy Fisher on my radio show because Debbie Allen is working with him to get his, his, um, his, his life produced as a TV show and as a film. But we were talking about that. So he did your show. He didn't do mine. I, I, I was on him the first day. For real? He out here in Florida. I was like, yo, God, try to hook me up with God. Yeah. And I told him, too. We, I, we got on the phone. I was like, yo, don't let these suckers interview. <laughs> you, you know, you got to come to the real. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? And, you know what, though? I will tell you this, Joe. Guy Fisher is, you know, a legendary for what he did in the street. But he wants to talk about what he's doing now. Education, what he did in jail. He became like a doctor. Like what 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 he got? What he do in jail? He's Dr. Fisher. So he went and he got his he got his uh G D and then he got multiple degrees while he was in jail. And then he started um the all these great programs to teach inmates how to write screenplays and books and things like that. So when he came on my show, you know I'm from Harlem, he's from Harlem. And he really did not want, I, because I know a lot of people that know Guy Fisher. You know what I'm saying? So, because even though I'm much You young, know a lot of people that know Guy Fisher? Yes. So yeah, I, me too. He was from Patterson Projects in the Bronx. But right. so let me tell you some crazy shit, though, uh, Bev. Because, look, Harlem has always been the mothership of black people. Yes. Especially creative fashionable mm -hmm. uh, black people. I'm talking about since day one. If you go Madam C.J. Walker, you right. go all those times, it yep. was Harlem. Everybody yep. was trying to get to Harlem. Yes. Right? And so Guy Fisher owned the Apollo. Yeah. He was the one of the biggest kingpins. So when he came out of jail, all my Harlem people was posting him trying to claim him as Harlem. And then I had to step up and stop it and be like, yo, that's BX Patterson Projects. Y'all need to right. stop. Right. But he did, but he made all of that lucrative money and he made his bones in Harlem. So that's what you That's know. it. I mean, that's a me too. Coming up, that's where I was at. Right. And um and but what's so special about Harlem before we go? That we got guys that grew up in other boroughs claiming Harlem and they're not really f from there. Yeah. Like, I, I'm you seen? I've seen it. Yes, we like, have seen it. I'm talking about big, big artists yes. saying they from Harlem, Harlem, and I know they from the Bronx because I know they sisters. Right. <laughs> they big sisters and all that. So right. I be like, oh, word, Harlem. Mm hmm Not Cretona Park. Right. Not, right. not East Tremont. They do it. So all it gives you. So so bad when you go to a party, let's say Rock Nation brunch in L.A. Or, yep. Or something like that. You walking in like Bevy from Harlem. Yes, definitely, definitely. Because you got to remember too, like I, I, I knew Jay Z when he was a hustler. You know, like so all of us we kept up together. You know what I mean? He knew, he knew me when I was just a girl at the bar. You know, trying to get my 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 champagne. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get my bottles and everything. And I knew him when he was a hustler. And then, you know, we all came up together. So why would I ever try going there as Bevy Smith, the lady, or you know, Bevy Smith, the author. Like, no, I'm just going in there as my myself. And, you know, but I do love it. Like, oh, perfect. I went to Tyler Perry's studio opening. You know, he did that phenomenal studio, and I went. When I tell you, when me and Terrell saw Puffy, we it was almost tears for us, because that's hard right there. Like, we were like, oh, my God, look at this shit. It's the same thing when the Barack Obama inaugurations. Partying in the White House with D-Nice spinning, that type of shit. And you think about the fact that we're from 
the hood, the real hood, like not like a suburb or not something that's no, 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 no. We from the saw you, and he said, and, and, and you, 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 you do something that I done my whole life, and you never go home the same way. Right. So if you come out and make a right, you're making your way to come out and make a left yep. or go through the basement. My brother, shout out my brother, the money man. He taught me that since I was a kid in my projects. Yep. He said, never go out the same way. So I would go to school, front door. I would go to school the next day through the basement. I would come out my house, go to the right. I would do a little <laughs> extra so that nobody could really, really clock me. And I know you do that, Bev. Yes. How did you know that? Because I know things, Bev. Don't That's do that to yourself. Same way. I've I'll tell you the today. truth. I've done it several times with Terrell in the car with me. <laughs> and he one time he told me, uh, Yo, you know Bev does the same thing. She won't go back the same way. So <laughs> even if it's easy, it's like, yeah. yo, we got to switch it up on them. Shout out to Lisa Lisa from Cold Jam. Oh. She's in here. And it's her birthday. Happy birthday, Lisa Lisa. Yo, Lisa Lisa, I didn't know it was your birthday. She's so beautiful. I didn't know it was. It's her birthday. It's her birthday, even if it's today or tomorrow or yesterday. But yeah. Oh, God bless Lisa Lisa. I remember when I had her on here, you was in the comments saying, don't lie, you had a crush on her, Joey. Right, exactly. <laughs> that means she's bad, she's still bad, you know what I mean? It don't change, it don't change. It don't change. but you know what, Joe? I, I want to just give you your flowers right now, too. You are such a beautiful individual. You always have been. You're gracious. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, there's only been two men in hip-hop that have, because... So everybody should know, when I work in fashion at Vibe, I'm working with celebrities. And a lot of times, even when you're a woman, if you're working with celebrities, they're, they're still in their mindset, they're celebrities, and they're the most important thing. Only two men in hip-hop have ever taken beautiful care of me, and, and, and that's T.I. and Fat Joe. Wow. Joe, I've never been in your presence. And you've not been like, uh-uh, come on, Bev. We got, uh-uh. And like, you just back everything up. You make everybody good. You know how to take care of the women that are in your company. You are a proper gentleman. T.I. the same way. When I took T.I. to Milan, it was his first time ever overseas. And I took him to Milan for the fashion shows. And all the photographers were taking his pictures. And you know, Milan got all them cobblestones. And I had on like a six-inch heel. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. What's the cobblestone not bust my head wide open? T.I. realizes I'm not by his side. He turns around. He sees me struggling on the top cobblestones. He says to the, the photographers, hold up. He goes back, takes my hand, and, and gets me across the street. And then he goes back to doing the paparazzi and shit. But, and, then, and then he's done that countless amounts of times in clubs, you know, just making sure, like, whatever I wanted. You know what I mean? But there's not a lot of men like that in this business because a lot of times the men – are so used to being coddled and being celebrities that they act like a bigger woman than any woman with a vagina. But you know, I gotta <laughs> amazing. Yeah, Yo, you gotta stop. Yo, man, I got a uh, a friend out here, another woman, female. I can tell you one thing: they welcomed me to Clubhouse, right? And uh -huh. I didn't know how it worked. But when I went to Clubhouse, welcome Fat Joe or celebrate Fat Joe or something. I didn't know how it worked, right? But now that I know how it works. And I'm not the most perfect guy in the world, but I'm really, really impressed because the people who hold the floor in Clubhouse, you up on the stage, mm -hmm. there's certain people. All the people that held that stage were women. Yes. For me. Yes. They were like my security. Yeah. So you had Tina Davis, you had Robin from Ball Alert, you had Natina. You, they formed Voltron around me. It yeah. was like, all right, Joey, you could talk to Joey. Right. All right, you could talk to Joey. And, when I went back in there and started realizing Clubhouse, I said, man, I'm, you know, I have a lot of women that feel really comfortable, like with, with Jody. Because yeah. I, I, now that I know what's up with Clubhouse, they held me down. They was like, ain't no bullshit getting through here. Yes. Like, they yes. throwing Voltron on me. Yes. And I take pride in that. I'm not perfect. But uh, I love that all, all the women I know could feel comfortable around me, could feel free to not think that, you know, one of the number one questions that guys ask me behind the scenes is, have you ever looked at J-Lo's ass? 
And I tell him I never looked at her ass. Right. Why? Because we have a sister brother relationship. Right. I never want her to look back and see me looking at her ass. Right. That's nasty. Right, exactly, exactly. Right. If it wasn't brother and sister, it'd be like, hell yeah, I gotta look yeah. at J Lo ass. But you're but not brothers a culture, and, and you're huh? not a predator and you're not thirsty. It's like, come on. Lorena got one of the best asses in the game. You good. Boy, do I love it. I know. Boy. We all love it. You know, I was in uh, Wendy Williams like two weeks ago. I love Wendy. And Wendy was like, yo, your wife's so abusive. What is it? I was like, it's the ass for me. That fat ass for me. <laughs> <laughs> yo, Bev, I love you. Thank you for coming you, on. Baby. Revelations. We already bought five, ten copies. Keep Everybody up. needs to get this book. My sister, she does her thing. Harlem Candle. Yes. Langston News. That's right. And yo, Bev, you know what I like, Bev, is that I love that you don't have to ask nobody to promote your shit. No. And so I wake up the other morning, and, and the first thing I'm talking about, I just woke up, grabbed the phone, Terrell posts the book. Yes. Before that book gets to go like this, boom, I post it. Yeah. And before my shit gets to go like this, my wife, boom, and just yeah. everybody that knows us is like, boom, 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 yeah. Khaled. Everybody, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Because you got that kind of love. I do. And we want to see you do great. Thank you, baby. I love you. And thank you for- I love you, baby. And give your producer my love. You know I love Azzy. You know I Azzy's love. over there. You know, she's up top. Okay. Love you, babe. I love you too. Bye, baby. All right. Bye-bye. Woo! You don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. We know everybody. Bev's my sister. Support that book, Revelations. Support this book and everything my sister does. And so this is what this is about, man. And we're not going to let the media, we're not going to let these blogs and all that talk, our, talk about our people the wrong way. That's what this is all about, the power of media is to control the narrative and show young sisters that they could become successful like Bevy. That's what this shit is all about. Showing you that it's possible. That's what the big, 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 big show is all about. And I never have a boss. I'm always the boss. So we say what we want to say. Shout out Pepsi Wild Cherry, great sponsor. So we got to control the narrative and keep bringing people up here that came from nothing like us and became successful. That's what I do every night to you guys. Every night. 